So this morning, I want you to take your Bibles and let's have two scripture readings opening first to John chapter 14, verse 16 to 18. It says, and I pray, and I, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Verse 17, even the spirit of truth, which whom the world cannot receive. Why can the world not receive the spirit of truth, which is the Holy Spirit? Because they see him not. Holy Spirit, it's not something you can see with your physical eyes. You know, it said that is why the world cannot receive. It cannot receive him because they don't see him, neither knoweth him. But ye know him. You who are gathered today in the throne of grace, the Bible is telling you, you know him. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. And I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. So Bible is making a distinction between, you know, the children of God and the children of the world. It said they know him not because they cannot see him. Yeah, but it's so amazing that we don't want to know the Holy Spirit, you know, because we cannot see him. Unfortunately, many also who are in the church, but they don't have any relationship with the Holy Spirit. Today, my topic is things you should know about praying for the Holy Spirit. Things you should know about praying for the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says they don't receive him because they don't know him. But, or they have not seen him. We have not seen coronavirus, but we have all received coronavirus, we believe. That is coronavirus. So why is it that we believe that there is coronavirus? Because we see the effect of coronavirus, what it's doing. It's the same with, so when you believe that coronavirus exists, even though you cannot see it, doctors are doing everything to understand and to know. But what about the Holy Spirit? You know, I was, you know, during the week, looking at some story which really caught my attention because of head. You know, people say, and the president, you know, several times says that this disease is an invisible enemy. In other words, we cannot see it. No one can see it. Then I saw this, this you know, um, article. It was talking about to beat Corona, COVID-19, scientists try to see the invisible enemy. So they are trying to see you know, what is invisible. Today, I say I'm talking about, you know, how to pray for the Holy Spirit. You know, and it says using beams of X-rays and electrons, researchers are creating a moving model of the coronavirus in order to discover its weakness. Model basically means in their imagination, they're trying to put together, you know, what they think looks like coronavirus so that they will be able to determine what is the power of coronavirus. Is that not amazing? It's amazing. It said these researchers, you know, they barely slept over the last month. That was what caught my attention. They are trying to see an invisible spirit, something that is invisible. And they, they hardly slept over the last month, which is we are in April. Eh? Throughout March, they said they, they, they were not sleeping, you know? And this researcher's name is Romy Amaro. Her voice buzzes with restless energy. Her long sentences are punctuated with abroad pauses as she recovers her train of thought. Oh my God, can you tell I am getting tired? That is a question. She cannot sleep. She's fighting stretching out day and night to understand the invisible enemy that we have around us now. And this one was actually, you know, they're doing the research in UC San Diego biophysics. And this lady actually, 
works in you. See, and then the story continues. Said, but now is the time to not sleep. She was saying, this is not the time to sleep. We face an invisible enemy. This is not the time. So scientists understand that the way to counter invisible enemies is not to sleep. But the children of God, who the Lord has promised that I will go, I will not leave you comfortless. They are sleeping and snoring. When we have been promised that you will have power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Hallelujah. Amen. It said, but now it's not the time to sleep. She says, the scientist says, in the past few weeks, she and her international research team have been working at all hours to deliver a powerful new tool to be used to fight the global pandemic. They are creating a moving digital replica of the coronavirus simulated using a supercomputer that strives for scientific accuracy down to the microbes individual atoms i know most of us are asked students you won't even understand amen by visualizing the coronavirus behavior in detail visualizing this invisible enemy they are trying to visualize its behavior in detail Amaro wants to identify its structural vulnerabilities. Then other researchers could design drugs or vaccines that exploit those vulnerabilities to prevent infection. Once you know how a machine works, you can strategically make it stop, says the scientist. To make a car stop driving, you know that you can drain the oil or shoot a tire. Their simulation can help scientists figure out where the virus ties uh, and what kind of bullet to use against coronavirus. I mean, I was so much captivated about this story, you know, especially to understand that even in the scientific world, they understand invisible spirits, invisible, they call it the invisible enemy. And they are showing us that when you are against an invisible enemy, you don't fight it with flesh and blood. They say it's not time to sleep. It is not time for snoring. But we want to be able to understand the characteristics of the enemy. And how do you understand something that is invisible with your visible? You need to go into the same realm. That is why this morning I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. Because we've heard and we continue to hear that great number of people are falling asleep, dead. Over 50,000 already in the United States alone. You know, there is nothing that they could do to resist the death that comes their way. You know, that is what man it's we are vulnerable we are frail we don't have the power but we just want to be operating in the flesh when the flesh has no power this morning i'm talking about how to pray for the holy spirit as a scientist i have sleepless night what about you a child of god who has been promised the holy spirit if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, he emphatically said, I will not leave you. I will send the Holy Spirit. When you get to moments like this, you get to the storms. How do you understand the characteristics of the storm? How do you rise up to fight something that you cannot see? Scripture says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, be sober and be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, even it looks like the scientists understand the word of God more than the children of God. Because when we talk about spiritual things, we always say that, oh, science. But you are hearing that even the scientists understand invisible and how the tools that need to be developed to fight the invisible enemy. Your adversary, like the lion, is walking about seeking to devour. 
So this morning we're talking about how to pray for the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is invincible. Yeah. So he will come and be with us. We will not see him anymore. So this morning I want you to take your Bibles open to Genesis chapter 2, verses, verse 7. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7 tells us, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And man became a living soul. This scripture basically tells us the first breakthrough for man was the breath of God. Amen. The very first breakthrough is that God breathed the breath of life and man became a living soul. That was a breakthrough because man was formed and was just there without the breath of God into the nostrils of man. And I want you to take note of that. Man will not become what? A living being. Is that not it? That was the Holy Spirit. Humus man. Man created out of clay, the flesh. That's why the Bible says the flesh profits nothing. It is by the spirit. If you walk by the flesh, you are destroying yourself. We need to walk by the spirit. Say it took the breath of life, you know, and a dead body became alive, you know. So the Holy Spirit, when it comes, you see, when we receive the Lord, what happens to us, it's the Bible says we become born again. Born again basically means the Holy Spirit comes into your life and then he will bring the very first important breakthrough for your life. And that you become born again and you become alive. Amen. That is why it's very important for you to rise up and come to a point where you recognize that, you know, I need to be born again. Because when God did this, you know, in Genesis chapter 7, he breathed into the notice of man, and man became a living soul. Something else happened. Something else happened. What happened? We had God said something else also. If you open to Genesis chapter 2, 15 to 17, it said the same, the breathing to his notaries, he became a living soul. But God mentioned a word, which I believe all of us from today should take a very critical notice of. You know, Genesis chapter 2, verse 15 to 17, he says, And the Lord God took man and put him in a garden. Right? Put man in the garden to dress it and to keep it. Verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat. For... And this is where I want you to take note. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely do what? Die. In the day you eat that, so he breathed into the nostrils, man became a living soul. First breakthrough for man. That he rose up, you know, as a clay and began to walk. If you look at human being right now, and you want to know the physiology of human beings. I'm an ass student, so yeah, give a break. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You will see that when they open you right now, all things are working for good from your brain. You know, through your heart, everything is connected. Man was created. You see, today when I woke up, then I got hold of my daughters, you know, you know, yeah. And then I... That he didn't, this, this doctor didn't tell me anything. I took her and the way I was even handling her, you know, and I brought her to church. Up to now, she has never said anything. I dropped her on the floor. She is not saying anything. He said that is how man was. And before man became a living soul, it took the breath of God. 
breath of God. We create replicas of man. Robots, everything. But nobody has been able to breathe the breath of God into all these replicas and make them human. That is how important the word of God, understanding the word of God. But he said, God said, the day you go against my commandment, you will do what? You will surely die. So why did I bring, you know, this wonderful, my daughter's, you know, companion here today? Because I believe, you know, basically that there are many dead people walking. Dead people walking in the world. And even you come to the church sometimes, unfortunately, we have dead people walking. Because if you have not received the Lord as your Lord and Savior, when you do, it said, because we are all dead. Adam, did Adam die when he ate the fruit physically? No. no. So when I say there are dead people walking, understand me. There are people who are dead. We are dead spiritually. Yeah. God didn't take the spirit out, but he says something died in man when man went against the commandment of the Lord. So the second breakthrough for man, it's when you receive the Lord as your Lord and Savior, it said what? It will send the Holy Spirit to breathe into you again, and then you become what? A born again. That is the second birth. I believe you are understanding now. Hallelujah. Are you understanding the word of God this morning in your home? Wherever you are right now, are you understanding that there are many people who are dead? Who are walking about and the lord wants you to rise up wants you when you have the holy spirit in the sense so the message is that we need everyone to become spiritual we need everyone in, to rise out of death into life hallelujah amen and spirituality it starts from your relationship with god that is why prayer is wisdom if you can pray, it means that you have a connection to the heavenlies. Amen. It means you are no more walking dead. You have received the Lord as your Lord and Savior. And you have received, you know, the breath into you, which is the Holy Spirit breathes into you. And you become a living soul. Hallelujah. Amen. Whatever breakthrough you need or whatever is dead in your life, it is only through the Holy Spirit. When you pray, he said, pray that the Lord will give you what? The spirit of truth. Pray for the Holy Spirit. Now, if you don't understand that life is not about what you see, it's about the invisible. Because Corona just taught us that invisible things are much more powerful than anything. We still have the Tommy bomb sitting there. We can see them. Mm -hmm. We have all the, you know, the tanks. We have all, but it's taking people's life and no one could understand how it's doing it. Invisible things are very powerful. And that is why we need to rise up. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a thing about it. What is more difficult actually than the fact that God only breathed the breath of God into man and we became a living soul. What is more difficult? Yeah. Than just receiving the Lord and receiving the Holy Spirit. You cannot see that you are dead. That is what I'm trying to explain to you. If you have not received the Lord, Jesus says, then you have no life in you. I'm sure you understand it now because those words are mysterious. And sometimes we say, well, how can he say you know, that you have no life in you when you are walking. It's the same way because we are all from Adam, unless you don't believe the scriptures. If you are from Adam, then Adam didn't drop dead when he went against the commandment of God. So when Jesus said, then you have no life in you, you better understand. Hallelujah. Amen. Because there is nothing more difficult. What is more difficult? And the breath was breath into, you know, the thing that cannot say ha, ah, you see, I'm squeezing it right now, doing all things, but it cannot. You see, and the revelation also is, this is the way devil is treating most of us. Yeah. Yeah. Because there is no life in us. 
because we are dead we are as dead as you know this doll that i'm holding right now the devil is able to squeeze you the devil is able to take you wherever you don't even want to go the devil is able to make you do whatever you see i say turn your head turn your head the devil is able to make you do because it's invisible you can see it see it has eyes but you can see me it has nose but there's no life in it are you hearing the word of god yeah. this morning hallelujah Amen. so what we need is a breakthrough the breakthrough you need most is the holy spirit amen say the holy spirit i need the holy spirit and you need to pray for the holy spirit it comes upon you will be with you and will be in you you need the presence of god if you are a christian that cannot pray if you are a christian that cannot wait on the lord that does not have the presence of god then bible describes us as what new babies by the new babies it said oh they should desire the sincere milk that they will grow thereby that is why the lord in this difficult and treacherous moments is teaching us what it will take for us to break through all these invisible forces that are trying to destroy us are you hearing the word of god today Oh, whilst in your home, just tap somebody and ask your neighbor, are you hearing the word of God today? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And so I just want to talk briefly about seven things. Seven things that you should know about praying for the Holy Spirit. Are you ready to hear seven things? Yes. I believe this is the most important thing for every believer, for everyone. Because there are many tormenting spirits. There are many things that are destroying our very life. But if only we can have the Holy Spirit, say so you will have power. You know, yeah, how wonderful it will be to realize you have power over invisible things. If any of us could have power, you hear the scientists, all they want to know is to be able to understand the dynamics so that they can fight against the invisible enemy. And that is what a Christian, a testimony of a Christian, we should be hearing that Christians are having what? All night and praying and rising in the spirit to defeat the invisible forces that are released against us. And it's my prayer that from today, your life will not be prayerless and you will begin to stand up and pray for the Holy Spirit. Amen. So the first thing you need to know, praying for the Holy Spirit, is that you must pray for the Holy Spirit because Jesus specifically asks us to do so. Amen. Jesus, yes, he is the one we follow. Amen. You know, we are all kingdom children. Yes, he told us about the kingdom of God. And when he came, he showed us, you know, true deed. All he did was to show us how to live as kingdom children. And one of the critical emphasis of his ministry was that we ought to pray for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Open your Bibles to Luke chapter 11, verse 11 to 13. It says, Luke chapter 11, verse 11 to 13. If a son shall ask bread of any of you, that is a father. Yeah. Will he give him a stone? No, I don't believe. Or if he asks of fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? I don't think so. Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? I don't think any parent is that wicked to do that. So he say, how much more then shall your heavenly father give the holy spirit to them the way there is that asks him in other words the holy spirit just doesn't come and for skin anyone see for skin means he just throw himself on you no yeah the holy spirit is not like that you need to have a desire you need to confess the lord as your lord and savior and then you pray for the Holy Spirit. You ask, how much more 
the Father, Heavenly Father, will give the Holy Spirit to everyone that asks him. So Jesus said we should pray for the Holy Spirit. And if you are Christian, you have not prayed for the Holy Spirit. And you don't have the Holy Spirit. It's invisible. Then today, this word is for you. That rise up and pray for the Holy Spirit. As a believer, every time you get on your knees, every time you come against the money forces, you can do it by yourself. That is why Jesus asks us to have the Holy Spirit. And we know that when Holy Spirit descended, mighty works were done by the Spirit. And so I commend this morning to you that if you will not even hear me, at least hear the Lord Jesus Christ speaking to you today, how much more the Holy Spirit will be given to anyone that asks him. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you still in your homes? Are you still hearing the word of God? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The second thing you need to know. So first one is that Jesus said you should pray for and therefore do. The second thing is that because you are a human being clothed with weakness and in sin. We are all weak. We have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Even when we come to the Lord and we say, Lord, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Right after that, we go back as a dog go back to his vomit. And we pick up. We pick up all the sin, all the unrighteousness, you know. That is why you don't pray for the Holy Spirit once and you think you are done. It is a constant dose. Amen. Say a constant dose. You need to consistently pray. Every time you are in your, on your knees, you ask the Holy Spirit. I cannot feel your presence. I need your presence. I need you to guide me. You pray in the Holy Spirit because I don't even know what to say. You need to have the Holy Spirit because man is sinful and powerless. Amen. 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 You know, Friday we're praying and I actually gave you the scripture, I believe, in Acts chapter 5, right? But uh, Ananias and Sapphira. And I say, you see, just like the scientists are creating a model, model is a replica. They want to see it. See, today when you tell a lie, it doesn't mean that you are not falling dead, you know? So, oh, God is not powerful. Amen. I mean, most things in the Bible, the scripture says what? They are written for our example. The example is for us to understand the heart of our father. To know that sin, you know, it doesn't mean you are dropped dead, but you are actually dead in the spirit. That is why all other spiritual forces can have access to you. Because it is empty. You see, when the house is empty, they will go and then bring thousands and then they will come and fill you. And many people are filled with evil spirits that are controlling them because they are dead spiritually amen. amen open your bible second timothy chapter 1 verse 7 it says for god have not given you what the spirit of fear but what he's giving you is what power do you have the power of god if scripture says he's giving you the power power over what invisible spirits the things that your naked eye cannot see, you have power over them. But how do you rise when your flesh is dominating so much? What it tells us to do is what we will do. Scientists are having sleepless nights. And they are basically saying, how can you get tired at this time? But we have power and we deny the power. Because if those who don't believe in the Lord see us. They don't see power. Do they see power? No. You see people who are running and, you know, hiding under tables. We even run faster than those in the world. It says he's giving you power. He's giving you love and a sound mind to overcome evil spirits. Hallelujah. Amen. 
The power comes from what? The Holy Spirit. You will receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Then you will be able to do great and mighty things. Yeah, the kingdom children cannot, you cannot amount to anything in this world. If you are not a proper, you know, child of the kingdom, you need to rise up. You need the Holy Spirit and ask for the Holy Spirit. Ask for the Holy Spirit in your life. Ask for the Holy Spirit to guide you in power. Ask for the Holy Spirit. Your children are becoming wayward. You have power. The power is not your mouth. You've done it with all your mouth. You've done it with all your physical, you know, understanding. Rise up and ask the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the power that will change situations that you will not even understand. Because they are invisible. There are forces at work. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you hearing the word of God this morning? The third thing. And we're talking about seven things you should know about praying for the Holy Spirit. The third thing is that you have godly conviction. You must pray for the Holy Spirit so that you will have godly conviction. May, most of us have so many convictions. Our conviction is about how much money we can have in the bank. Our conviction is about, you know, things that really we know that ruining our life. How much hours can I spend on the job to make extra money that you know is unprofitable to you? But I say when you are praying for the Holy Spirit, what it does is it gives you, you know, you become so convinced about the Lord and the power of the Most High. You become so convinced about what I'm telling you that. The breath of life is what matters most. Yeah. All the 50 plus people, thousand that we had that are dead, the only difference between you and I is that you still have breath of life in you. And the moment the breath of life, we're hearing about ventilators and all kinds of things. When the air that is breathed into you cannot be sustained in that body, you become like this. What we are reduced to, yeah. it's that as last week we learned, we go back to the sun. And after many years, even our bones become sun. That is human. It's nothing about us. If anything, we've learned these few months, you know, through the situation and the conditions that plague the world is humility. And each and every one of us now we will humble ourselves. Our conviction should not be about things that, you know, have no eternal value. Yeah. In your Bible, John chapter 16. And I'm giving you this scripture so you will note for each and every Bible as a one that opens our eyes into the unseen, that we will know the power. Power has been given to us. John 16, verse 7 to 11, it says, But I tell you, I'm reading from the New American Standard Bible, it said, But I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth this morning. It is to your advantage that I go away. It was Jesus Christ. I tell you the truth. It is better for you that I go away. For if I don't, Mm -hmm. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And he, when he comes, what he will do, he will convict the world in regard to sin. We are doing so many things. Yeah. Because we are dead. We don't even have any conviction. It's almost like this door. There is no conviction that anything is happening to me. I can touch it, you see, step on it. Devil is stepping on your head. What you have no conviction. But I say, when you have the Holy Spirit, what will you have? It will convict the world of sin. Amen. In other words, 
the things that you ought not to do, something within you, which is the Holy Spirit. Your conscience becomes what? More sharpened to sin and unrighteousness. But mostly we are children of God, but we don't have the Holy Spirit, and therefore you will sin what? Sin has even dominated the church more than out there. There are two people in the church that are doing abominable things. One time Paul has to say, even this doesn't have to be mentioned among, you know, the children of the kingdom. That someone will go and sleep with what? The father's wife. And you know it, the Christians, you know what we do. Husband, wife, you know, married people, all you know in the kingdom. Because there's no more conviction. We come to church. Right after here, we go back and we are just like those who have not and have no connection to the Lord. I say, when you pray for the Holy Spirit, one thing it will do to you is that it is going to give you a conviction. It will convict the world. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. There are three things, sin, righteousness, and judgment. Yeah. Two, you have control over. You have control over what? Sin. You have control over righteousness, but judgment you don't have control over. The conviction in your heart will be when you are convicted about sin, you turn away from sin. Because you know that this life it's not about the flesh, it's profit. There are things beyond your naked eyes that you cannot see. It is not about what you think. It is not about what you see. It is not about what, you know, some intellectual somewhere with the knowledge of the flesh this world is telling you. It's about the spirit. Hallelujah. And then, you know, righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you no longer see me. And concerning judgment, because the ruler of the world has been judged. The devil has been judged. I said he was sacked from heaven and thrown out. He has been judged. That is why he's running with vengeance. You know, like a roaring lion seeking to devour. But if you pray for the Holy Spirit, you have power, power to have conviction, power to be spiritual child. My prayer is that we rise to higher levels. There is no child that does not grow. It is only in the kingdom of God that you see many people who want to be remain children for 30 years. We come, go through motions, and then we go. Now you are in your home. Can you recognize the reverence the Lord? Whereas I'm speaking right now, maybe somebody, you are just sleeping on your bed comfortably. You don't know what is surrounding you, the things that you cannot see and about to destroy you. Yeah. If you know, you will not be that comfortable. Yeah. You will rise up. Yeah. Your hands will be stretched up and you will be asking, Lord, I need the power to encounter the storm. As we saw in Psalm 107 today, it said when they cry out to the Lord, then he was able to still the storm. It's invisible. Wow. If you start, see a storm raging, it means something is causing the storm to rage, but you cannot see what is causing it to rage. The wind that is getting into that, you cannot see it. And it's only the one that created all things that can come every storm. Hallelujah. Oh, give a clap offering unto the Lord in your homes, in everywhere you are this morning. This is the power we have as the children of God. Point number four, I'm teaching you how you can pray for the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You must pray for the Holy Spirit so that you bear the fruits of the Spirit. If you get convicted, the next thing is to bear fruit. Is that not it? is to bear fruit, the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians, I believe most of us know, Galatians 5, 22 to 23, 
He said, but the fruit of the spirit is love. Yesterday we were having marriage seminar. And you can see most of the challenges and the problem. It's just because we've gone against the commandments of the Lord. I see people are walking about dead. Dead people walking. Tell your neighbor, I can see some dead people walking. Dead people walking. You will see. Hallelujah. He said, if you have the Holy Spirit, you will be able to love. See, anytime I'm counseling people and a husband and a wife, couple, they're having problem. The first question I ask them is, Bible says you should love your enemies and do good to those who do what? Despitefully use you. I say, if this person has even become your enemy, don't you know what the scripture says? <laughs> Say, love your enemy. Those who have the Holy Spirit will manifest what? The fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit is to love. In that case, it means your marriage will not be a football for any demonic spirits to be tossing you around. You know, one thing we noted yesterday, and you will see, it's that we are chasing the things of the world. We are chasing the world, most of us, especially immigrants, working our head out that we have no relationship back at home. There is no relationship. There is no conversation. The world has become dark all around us. And in the end, the money is not even saving us in any way. I've known people whose children become something else because they have no time. There is no father and mother that are raising up children at, the, at, at home. Our marriages has become, you know, because there are invisible forces that are released to destroy us, but we cannot see because we as children of God do not pray for the Holy Spirit. We don't have the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is supposed to cause us to manifest the fruit of the Spirit so that in our marriage, so that in our relationship, the fruit of the Spirit is being manifested because you have children that have the Holy Spirit. Fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. There is no joy in our homes anymore. There's no joy in our life. Our children don't even want to live in the house because it be, almost become like a well, cemetery. Meanwhile, 60, 70% of your income is going to that house that is actually a cemetery. Wow. Even in the cemetery, you will hear the birds chirping in the morning. So even those who are lying underground, they are enjoying better than that mansion that you put in all your sweat and toil, laying up treasures on earth where dove, moth and dove do corrupt. We need wisdom. That's why I told you, if I will recommend anything to you, recommend wisdom. Because with wisdom, you don't need deliverance. Most of us need deliverance because we don't have the wisdom of God. Love. Joy, peace. There's no peace. If you take our lives, there's no peace. There's no peace. We long for peace, but we cannot find peace. We thought we came. Most of us, especially immigrants, came to this land. And when we're coming, we hear that it's a land that is flowing with what? Milk and honey. And you come right now, milk and honey. I mean, even... <laughs> I don't want to go there. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 There is no peace. There is no peace. Long suffering, gentleness, goodness. So it said, when you pray for the Holy Spirit, what you have is a fullness of life, a breakthrough. Because when that Spirit comes into you, what is dead becomes alive in Jesus' name. Every dead bones come alive. In the name of Jesus, and it's my prayer today, as you're hearing these words of wisdom, that your dead body is coming alive spiritually in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. For we cannot allow the things of the devil to corrupt us and take away. Yesterday I was telling those who were at the seminar that every day that passed, yesterday, the moment you you I open in the morning, you know that that night is gone. You will never see it anymore. That is how pitiful we are without wisdom. 
forgetting that what you are trying to pile up and all the toys and you know everything that you don't even pause to think about your life it's all passing before your very eyes before you realize you have left all for some fool to enjoy hallelujah what does it profit us if we gain the whole world and lose our soul praying for the holy spirit is that he will give you wisdom to be able to know how to live in this world and be a kingdom child in the name of jesus say i am a kingdom child and i will pray for the holy spirit and the holy spirit is going to make you manifest the fruit of the spirit number five is that you must pray for the holy spirit so that you have power to be a witness for the lord jesus christ amen, amen. to be a witness a Christian is supposed to bear fruit. Why it's difficult for us to do? Tell somebody, God loves them. Tell somebody, there is more to life than all this. We cannot do it because we ourselves are dead. Yeah. But if the Spirit comes into you, you have a breakthrough, you become alive. The lifeless thing rises up with life. And then you will be able to, you know, be a witness. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost come upon you. Then you will be witness unto me. If you have not been witnessing unto the Lord, then I'm sure today you want to ask yourself some very important questions. Am I dead or am I alive? Ask yourself, am I dead or am I alive? If I'm alive, then those who are alive is something shows about them because this thing is dead you can see if i'm alive then i behave like someone who is alive we need to be alive spiritually we need to be alive he said you will be witnesses unto the uttermost part of the earth number six why you must pray for the holy spirit is that so the Holy Spirit, so that you manifest the gifts of the Spirit. You don't only know about the gift of the Spirit, but there is manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 to 10 says, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to everyone to profit from it. Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord. So you will be saved. Because the manifestation is given to everyone. It is not just for few. That is why I said that wisdom will make you not to go seeking deliverance. It will make you not to go seeking that, you know, there's some prophet that has come to town. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So I'm going to chase. No, the manifestation of the gift is given to who? Everyone to profit from it. Is that not it? For to one is given the spirit of the word of wisdom. Word of wisdom. Why don't you pray for? These are all, we're talking about what? The gift of the Spirit. What else do you want to pray for? I believe that even when we get on our knees, all you do is Holy Spirit. Adel. Holy Spirit. On the day of Pentecost, it made a difference in the life of people who basically we could not describe either too. It made a great difference in their life. To another is given knowledge by the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit. So you see that there's a package when you have the Holy Spirit. You can call upon the name of the Lord and diseases hear your voice. Because they are spiritual and you are encountering spiritual with spiritual. But most of the time, what do we do? Even when we come to pray, we are shouting with our flesh because we don't have the power, which is the Holy Spirit. Pray for the Holy Spirit. Tell your neighbor, I have to pray for the Holy Spirit. Another, the working of miracles. We are jumping from place to place. People should perform miracles for us. Whilst you have been in a church for what, 10 years now, you are still asking someone to perform miracle for you. To another is given, you know what? Miracles, spirit of miracles. 
You can rise up also and decree a thing and it shall come to pass. When you ask and receive the Holy Spirit, it means you are alive in the Lord. Amen. Rise up and be alive in the Lord. Amen. We must not be dead. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the kingdom of God. Don't you want to be part of that kingdom? I'm not talking about religion or going to church. I'm talking about being a child of God in the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. To another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, another interpretation of tongues. There's so much going around you, you cannot even discern as a child of God. But when we pray for the Holy Spirit, and the last thing you need to note today is that you must pray for the Holy Spirit so that you have increasing wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and counsel. But when you go to Isaiah 11, we understand that Jesus' life was different even though he was walking in the flesh. The difference is that he was not walking dead. Amen. Amen. He was not walking dead. He was not a flesh that was dead like Adam. The second Adam came and showed us the way. He showed us the path to go in the kingdom of God. He came to translate that from the kingdom of this world into the kingdom of God. That today we will all belong to the kingdom of God. You belong to the kingdom of God, not the kingdom of the world. Then you have to rise up as a child of the kingdom. And do as the Lord Jesus Christ has shown us. In Isaiah, he said, the spirit is upon me. The very first day he proclaimed, it said, the spirit is upon me. Even at 12 years old, didn't you hear me and the Pharisees in the temple? The spirit has been upon me. The spirit is upon me because he has anointed me. You know, he has anointed me to preach the gospel. Is that not it? He has anointed me with wisdom. He has anointed me with understanding. He has anointed me with the spirit of what? Counsel and might and the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. So uh, there are seven spirits upon me. You hear about demons and demonets. I mean, you also, God already has destined you that you should be operating in seven spirits. When Jesus was fully operational in seven spirits, when you go to verse 3, what does he say? Verse 3, he said, and shall make him what? Quick of understanding. Some of us cannot understand anything because we have not prayed for the Holy Spirit. We don't have the Holy Spirit. That is why you can't understand anything of the kingdom. We are walking dead. Say dead men walking. Dead men walking. Hallelujah. Are you here or you go home? Hallelujah. Are you in your home or you've gone, you've gone to sleep? Amen. And shall make him of quick. That is why Jesus was distinct. What made Jesus different was that he had the Holy Spirit. Before all this, he went to the wilderness. He was praying. The Holy Spirit was with him. And today, we I always ask, what is the name of your father? I'm talking about the son of God. Who needed the Holy Spirit? To be able to walk this earth. And you and I think we can just walk freely. In the midst of what? Demons. And be free. Yeah. In the midst of what? Corona virus. And be free. Where you don't even know the next step tomorrow. What it brings you. So we need the Holy Spirit. Tell yourself I need the Holy Spirit. And from today. I will pray for the Holy Spirit. I understand why I need the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. So I just want to conclude today as a few words that I believe the Lord is using to heal us. Today we've been, you know, teaching about prayer. You have to pray the whole night. You need to cultivate. You need to 
have the desire because this is what makes us children of God. This is what makes us strong in the power of his mind. This is what the Bible describes as putting on the whole armor of God that you will be able to do what? Withstand the wiles of the evil one. You need to pray for the Holy Spirit. You need to ask for the Holy Spirit. You need to receive the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit guide our life. Yes. It's not one that we can discard in our life and be able to do anything that will be profiting because this life is passing away and all the deceptiveness is passing away. Except those who endure to the end, they will receive life. You need to endure and it takes the power of the Holy Spirit. By ourselves, we can do nothing. Hallelujah. So we need to go to our first love. The breath of life was in Adam, but Adam was dead. So the day you eat this fruit, you will die. But when the second Adam came, mm. he promised us that when you have the Holy Spirit, you become born again. You become a new person. Behold, all things have passed away. The Adamic nature is passed away. And that is why mostly Jesus never talked about church. Is there any point in the scripture you hear Jesus talking about church? And he always talked the kingdom of God. It's like we are supposed to live in the kingdom of God as children of the kingdom of God. And he's demonstrated and showed us one of the most critical things he showed us is to pray. Hallelujah. Everything by prayer. Tell your neighbor everything by prayer. Nothing without prayer. Nothing without prayer. Should not be a rhyme, but it should be a word that we put into our heart. He said, Pray for the Holy Spirit, and you'll become a powerhouse of miracle signs and wonders. Hallelujah. So I'm going to conclude today, and I want to give you three points. I'm taking them from Ezekiel chapter 37. Hallelujah. So if you can open your Bibles with me. To Ezekiel chapter 37 this morning. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Ezekiel chapter 37. First from verse 1 to 3. It says, the hand of the Lord was upon me, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 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 Thank you. Thank you. The hand of the Lord was upon me. He carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were many, very many in the open valley. Who were many, many in the open valley. Dead bones, dead bones in the open valley. There were many, were many. And lo, they were very dry, very dry bones, very dry bones, very dry bones. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones come alive in the name of Jesus Christ? Can these bones come alive? Can these bones come alive? He said, Adam, the day you eat this fruit, the day you go against my commandments, the day you set your eye to the world instead of setting your eye to the kingdom and being a kingdom child, thou shalt die. There are many dry bones in the valley. Many bones. And I answered, oh Lord, thou knowest. Thou knowest, Lord. So the first thing is that we have many dead things in our life and we must desire the breath of life through the Holy Spirit. There are many dead things in our life. You know, even as I'm talking right now, some are asking themselves, can I marry again? Oh, mashuka, tura, babuya, babaya. Some are asking themselves, will my business triumph again? Katurubo. Will I prosper again? Oh, ya katoro moshike, ya babuya, babaya. 
Remember, will somebody like me again? Somebody is asking them, so we have many dry bones in our life, many things. There are storms in our life. Rakatoraba, things that others cannot even see. Roko to Syria, Makia Katoya Babaya. Reme Koraba Baba Baba. Can I ever oh, do this or that again? Rima Suke Ima Kura Baba Baba. Oh, can I have a child? Can I be able to straighten up my child who is going wayward? Can this disease be taken out of my body? He said there were many dry bones in the body. He cried, son of man, can these bones come alive? He answered, God, thou knowest, thou knowest, thou knowest, thou knowest. In the name of Jesus Christ. And verse 4. He said, again, he said unto me, Prophesy upon the bones. Tell the bones. Prophesy. Speak to them. And say to them, Oh, ye dry bones. Say, Makoto Robo, see Ababaya. Oh, ye dry bones. Oh, ye dead bodies. Hear the word of the Lord today. That says the Lord unto these bones. Behold, I will cause the breath. The breath, the breath, the breath, the breath. It's a when the spirits breathe upon that again. Then we become living souls. I will cause the breath to enter into you. May the Lord breathe upon you this morning. Desire the Holy Spirit. Pray for the Holy Spirit. Pray for the breath. Pray for the breath, cause the breath to enter you, and then you shall live. You will no more be walking dead, but you will be alive. Alive to the Spirit. Begin to bear the fruit of the Spirit. Begin to be a child in the kingdom of God. That you have conviction. Oh, that yes, you can have a child. You will have conviction that you will marry again. Your life will be beautiful. You will have conviction that that disease is not meant for your death. In Jesus' name. And I will say, I will lay the sinews upon you. And will bring up flesh upon you. And cover you with skin. And put breath in you. That that which is dead will come alive. Oh, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. We don't serve a dead God. The second point you need to know is that the Holy Spirit entering into you will cause you to have breath and you will live. You will live. Learn to speak to the dry bones in your life. And it takes the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, to cause the sinews to come on those dry things. And cause life to enter into them. Every situation, it says he will still the storm. It takes the Holy Spirit speaking. And the last part, verse 7 to 10. It said, I prophesied. I prophesied. As I prophesied to you this morning. Oh, yes, if you rise up and receive the Spirit. Pray for the Holy Spirit. Oh, yes, every dry bone. I said, thou know it. And he said, I, so I prophesied as I was commanded. As I was commanded. As I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking. May the things in the spirit be shaking in your life right now. As I prophesy, there was a shaking. And the bones come together. Bone to bone. That's it. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh, exactly as the Lord has said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come and be in you. You will not see me, but I will be with you. The Lord, he said, the flesh came up upon them and the skin covered them above. But there was no breath in them. It lay down without breath. Oh, when the Holy Spirit can say, you are born again. You begin to walk a new life. New life. You are alive. He said, as I prophesy, everything happened as the Lord has said. 
But there was no life. It was still dead. I've been walking in the church for 20 years, but there's still no life. Still no life. Yes, I did. Oh, but there was no life. There was no life. Then he said to me, this night, prophesy to the wind. Prophesy. You need a breath of life. You need the Holy Spirit. Now prophesy to the wind. This is still lifeless. Prophesy to the wind. Prophesy to the winds. Oh, breath. And breath upon this land that they may live. Verse 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came unto them. And breath came into them. And the dry bones live. Thou knowest, Lord. You come to that moment. You ought to rise up as a child of God. Pray for the Holy Spirit. The Lord will guide you. will tell you a way to go. What to do. What to say. In the name of Jesus Christ. They stood upon their feet. And it was an exceedingly great army. I see a great army rising up out of death and to life. I see those situations that have been protracted in your life for so long. And it's because you never know how to say, Lord, thou know it, and pray for the Holy Spirit. But today you know, you know that you must make up your mind to become a prayerful person. A spiritual child of the Lord. Because as you do, every dead situation will come alive. Because as you do, the things that are lifeless will receive life. Because as you do, you have a great conviction of the power and the glory of the Lord. Shall we rise to our feet? This is the hour of visiting. In your homes, rise to your feet. Hear the Spirit call out to every person. Come, let us enter in. Bow down and worship Him. This is the hour of His day. This is the hour, this is the hour of visitation. I hear, hear the Spirit call out to every person. Come on now, come let us enter in, bow down and worship Him. This is the hour of visitation. Right now, in your homes, wherever you are, I want you to lift up your hand right now. Go and begin to speak. Speak to the dry bones. Speak to every unbearable situation. Speak to every soul frustration. Pray for the Holy Spirit right now. Oh, yes, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, this is a moment you can call on the Lord as a child desireth to speak. So you open up your mouth and you will speak and the Holy Spirit will come into you. He will make you a new person. You will receive power today over every issue. The eye of the understanding will be enlightened that you will know the hope of the one who has called. The creator of the heavens and the earth is giving breath right now to every dead bone. He's giving breath right now. Now, to every dead body is making protracted situations right now. Oh, respond. Walls are falling down right now. Oh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Second Torah Baboya, what seems to be oh, something unsurmountable right now. You're overcoming by the Spirit. For yes, it is not by the flesh.
flesh. You do not see in the flesh, but you see into the spirit, and you see an army rising up. You see yourself. Oh, yes, an, an army joining the host of the heavenlies. Oh, a child of the kingdom of God that you can also decree, you can prophesy, you can speak in the name of Jesus Christ. It's giving you boldness now. Oh, in these days that we live in, in this evil time, to rise up. Oh, yes, in the glory of the living God, to be a kingdom child that professes to be a kingdom child that speaks and things come to be in the name of Jesus Christ. Take the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. He say, yes, son of man, prophesy to the wind, prophesy to the wind. And as the wind ended, all the dry bones, they rose up and it was a large army. Rise up today, rise out of the death and to life, rise out of the death and to life, rise out of the death and to life, rise out of every situation and receive the glory of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Rama I'm leaving me all my life. Take over. Come breathe in me. I will ride on it. Come live in me all my life. Take over. Come breathe in me, I will rise on eagles wings. Oh, thank the Lord right now for all is done. Here we are waiting, abide in us, Holy Spirit. Abide in us this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Abide in us, Holy Spirit. Thank him. Thank him. Ramakura, baba, baba. Yenamakura, baba. Thank the Holy Spirit right now for the grace and the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, that is our work right now. To everyone who believe, to everyone who believe, to everyone who believe. I see the power, the power resting upon each and every one of us. Our lives will never be the same. I see dry bones coming alive because of the breath. The wind of the Lord is blowing through your homes through your life, through everywhere you are right now, and you believe with a raising of hand, submitting yourself unto the Lord. I see the Holy Spirit, oh yes, opening up blind eyes right now. I see the Holy Spirit taking out diseases that have plagued us all for so long. That is the power we have. Oh, that we will also speak and it will come to be. He says, Son of man, I will prophesy for the Lord knows the way for each and every one. I see that your wayward child. Oh, in the name of Jesus Christ. The heart of stone turned into heart of flesh. In the name of Jesus Christ. Satan's thing he can use to destroy you. But right now. All oh, dead bones are coming alive. You will marry again. You will marry again. You will have a husband. You will enjoy. Your married life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thou knowest, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord, I test for you. And I long to be in your presence. Mm. My soul wait on you. Father, draw me nearer to the Spirit. Draw me nearer to the beauty of your own. And I will wait, and I will wait. All my life, I will not stop praying, Lord. Oh my, calling upon the Holy Spirit. Oh, in the beauty of the whole meaning. And I will worship, I will worship you. Oh my, be God. In the beauty of your 
in us. Holy Spirit, blessed comfort, counselor, and with us. Maybe you are joining this service today, but you have not received the Lord as your Lord and Savior. Talking about praying for the Holy Spirit. You need to first come and confess. You need to first come and give your life. Because you live in, you know, Adamic sin. And until you come and give yourself to the Lord, you are dead. You are dead in sin. And I want to invite you this morning. I want to invite you this morning, this afternoon, to give your life to the Lord. Give your life to the Lord. All it takes is to confess. So wherever you are right now, I want to recommend, commend the Lord to you. You heard me preach this morning. The breath that was in Adam, he was dead. That is why the devil had upper hand over. The devil had upper hand over us. But there is a second breath that when you come to the Lord and you confess him before men, he will confess you before the Father. Say, heaven, all it takes is to pray a prayer of faith. And wherever you are right now, I want you to lift up your hand in your home, in your office. Find a place right now. This is a serious thing. Because life is passing away. 50,000 people just died. We don't know how many of them even know the Lord. This life is passing away. Only the love of God endures forevermore. I want to lead you this morning. It's by the Holy Spirit. We cannot see, but we speak it. And the Lord, oh yes, who is spirit, will receive. Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. And as you do, will change your life today. That you are translated from death unto life. So raise up your hand right now. And all it takes is by faith, speak with me right now. Just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I thank you. Thank you for this moment that I can recognize my life and sin. I know that I'm dead because I've been living in sin. I've been doing things that I ought not to do. I've never confessed you as my Lord and Savior. But I'm convicted in my heart today and I've heard your word. And I want to receive you as my Lord and Savior. I heard that you promise that when I do, my name will be written in your book of life. Oh, right now, I believe that as I've given my life, my name is in your book of life. From today, I am born again. Oh, from today, I have the opening for the Holy Spirit to come into me and live in me. And I know that you will give me the Holy Spirit. So I thank you. The devil have no hold over me anymore. I am now a child of God. I am born again by the Spirit and the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for this new birth. In Jesus' name. Oh, give a cry unto the Lord.